Society celebrates women when they pursue masculinity and it insults that nourishing femininity. Remember that you can be successful, feminine, and nurturing and never pursue a masculine career and you are not a failure. Choose the... All right, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. If this is your first time visiting, my feminine sisters and I are all giving you a very warm welcome and as usual to all my returning subscribers and viewers, thank you for joining us, thank you for your support, and thank you for being my sisters in this movement. This video is specifically for young women whose goal in life is motherhood, family, and marriage. Although many modern people cannot understand it, there are still many young women in the world who desire a life revolving around family or potentially even the option to be a homemaker, housewife, or stay-at-home mom. As always, we respect everybody on this channel and we respect and love and admire our career-minded sisters, but because of that, we also respect and admire and encourage our traditional sisters. And so today we are going to be talking about tips for our young traditional sisters looking towards eventually being a wife, a mother, and a homemaker. All right, my first tip is to be honest about what your dreams actually are. So many people run around living life thinking that they want something when really it's just what society has told them. Be honest with yourself about what your dreams are. Sit down by yourself, ponder this over a few months, and journal. Do not let my words, the media's words, your parents' words affect you in this area. Ultimately, you need to live your life in a way that's going to be the most satisfying so that you can be an effective member of society. And the way to do that is to pursue what your dreams actually are. If your only dream is to be a mother and a wife, do not feel small. That is a wonderful calling and we need more stable families in our society. Many women convey to me that they feel guilt and shame over desiring a life at home as if it were selfish or desiring a life with their children as if it were selfish. When in reality, a mother tuned in to the needs of her children and graciously guarding the spending of a home and the goings on within a home is a generous and wonderful way to live. Take note of what you're doing in your life because of your desire versus other people's desire for you. You don't need to sashay around announcing to everybody that you want to be a housewife, but you can at least be honest with yourself in the privacy of your own bedroom or your journal about what your dreams are. But if you have that as a goal, there's a likelihood that you're going to make decisions propelling you forward in that area of life. This leads us to number two, plan your life strategically with the family in mind. Of course, if you're not married, if you're single, don't shut down wonderful opportunities in your life. I myself met my husband on a study abroad program to Israel. Make decisions that draw you closer to your overall goal, just as you would if you were building a career. Living in San Francisco, approaching a PhD program, and never trying to date anybody isn't going to draw you into the life of a homemaker. But if you're open to dating, you're on the scene, you're seeking out traditional men, you're focusing on your traditional lifestyle, you're going to be closer to that goal. Be aware that how you live in the moment affects your future. The choices you make right now lead you towards your future. Remember that we cannot manifest a husband. Be strategic. Do not just graduate high school expecting that there's going to be a man right there to marry you. Get a job, get skills, go to college if you want. Learn to have skills so that you can support yourself until you become a homemaker or a stay-at-home mom, or if that never happens. Remember that life is subject to change and we should not be foolish and never learn how to provide for ourselves. Even I have a degree and work experience if I ever had to leave behind this blogging and homemaking lifestyle. 
begin making your life suit you versus making yourself to suit your life. Customize your life and be strategic about the choices you make. And this does lead us to number three, date compatibly. Be wise. You cannot be a homemaker and a housewife without a husband. You're going to need a special kind of traditional masculine man. If you want to be a homemaker and a housewife, you need a partner in that. And we do not want to be a burden on our husbands, so choose a husband who would be delighted to have a homemaker or a housewife for a wife. I would say the same to a woman wanting a robust career. Don't marry a man who wants a housewife. Be compatible with how you both visualize your life. Many women ask me how they can find a traditional man, and my personal experience was that I met many traditional men in the Midwest in a smaller, more rural community. You will also find more traditional men in conservative communities or religious communities. Make sure that you are inserting yourself in communities that, that have men in them that you would ultimately like to marry. And also, as far as the topic of children, if your goal is to be a mother, do not date a man who does not want children. It will be a struggle and you ultimately want him to treasure the children you have together as much as you do. Have compatibility with the men you date and do not fool yourself into thinking someone's going to change. I would never want someone to date me hoping that I would change into what they wanted me to be. Do not do that to the men in your life. Allow them to flourish the way they were created, and if it's not compatible to your lifestyle, it might be time to move on. All right, number four. This one's a little more serious. Prepare for backlash to your traditional desires. This is very common. I have heard many young women express that their own parents, friends, siblings, people in their life have given them backlash over their desire to be a homemaker, housewife, stay-at-home mom, etc. This is tragic because it is very clear in the West that we have major societal problems based off of the lack of family and structured family in our society. The more women we have willing to take on the role of homemaker and stay-at-home mom, the better. I believe that it is a worthwhile pursuit, but this is something you have to choose for yourself. Again, you don't need to be in your face with people about your lifestyle choices, but if someone is extremely rude and harsh to you and pressuring you into a lifestyle that you're not interested in, that person does not have your best interest in mind. Anyone who tries to get you to do something that would not lead to your ultimate fulfillment and success as an individual does not have your interest in mind, they have theirs. This one is extremely frustrating to me because it is horrible to me that parents who have already experienced the joy of parenting, marriage, and a family lifestyle would encourage their children to pursue a career over that because they have already received that joy and benefit. They already have the love of their life. They've already had children. They've gotten to experience that. And it is cruel to me to deny that to your children. If you are a parent, let your child pursue the life that they desire. It is important when you're at home to be very respectful of your parents and the people who provide for you and who love you, but it does not mean that you cannot have boundaries and desires for your future. You don't need to be rude and childish with your parents, but you can express that you desire a life at home. Be firm and don't let people sway you if you truly know what you want in life, but also be open to advice. Remember that your life is ultimately yours. You're the one who's going to have to live the life you build, not your parents. Not let people sway you one way or the other. Be open to conversation, but if someone's being extremely cruel or rude to you, Flip the narrative. Ask them, would you be this negative if I was trying to be a lawyer or trying to be a doctor? Everyone in our society conflates those glamorous CEO masculine jobs as if they're the only path. And society celebrates women when they pursue masculinity. 
and it insults that nourishing femininity. Remember that you can be successful, feminine, and nurturing and never pursue a masculine career and you are not a failure. Choose the life that best reflects your personal desires and who you are inside and never let the backlash from other people prevent you from choosing this lifestyle. All right, number four, work on your flaws. As you grow in your life, you are going to want your family to be stable. And, and if your main purpose in life is to nurture a family, you're going to want that relationship and that structure to be as stable as possible. The way to achieve this is not by controlling other people and changing them and bossing them around. The way to improve this area of your life is by improving yourself, improving the things that make you difficult to be around. For me, this meant working on my ability to control my emotions and my words. I had to work and still have to work on controlling my emotions in times of stress and conflict. This has made me much easier to be married to, as my husband will attest, and I know it will benefit me when I am a mother because then instead of lashing out at my children, I will be able to have that discipline, self-control worked on for years when I interact with my children. Our modern world has forgotten the importance of being sensible and rational. With all of the self-care, you're perfect just the way you are kind of information, women miss out on the valuable advice to improve and to work on themselves. Not everybody's a treat to be around 24-7, but some people are more difficult than others. I know many of us wish that our mothers had worked on some of their emotion control before having children. If you struggle with emotional incontinence, laziness, anger, or any type of thing that would hurt your children, it's important to take the time now to work on yourself. If this means counseling, go for it. If you just need to improve yourself or get involved with a community or whatever, take stock of what you could improve because those things are going to greatly affect your children. As I've spoken about before, if you have a daughter and she hears you consistently complaining about the size of your thighs, she might grow up hating the size of her thighs. So if you struggle with body image, image right now, if you struggle with anger, whatever you struggle with, work on it now so that you can prevent a lot of that pain from toppling upon your children and your husband. This is not about being perfect, but it is about improving ourselves so that we can live more effective lives. Being a mother is very difficult and it is a very demanding job. If you have a lot of personal flaws and struggles on top of all the other things you're going to have to deal with, it's going to be that much harder. Remember to take these years of preparation to improve yourself and become the person you want to be so that you can pass that down to your children. My next piece of advice is to avoid the party scene. This doesn't mean not being social. It doesn't mean never drinking, never going out. It just means being aware that who you surround yourself with is going to affect your life. There is this narrative that we can spend our 20s partying and being irresponsible and basically in an extended adolescence. But I can tell you from personal experience, as a young 20s wife and homemaker that I am very joyful. I love being at home and I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I have so much joy at home and it is a different joy than that intense heightened emotional state that many people experience in that type of situation. And yes, this does matter when you're a young woman because many people marry the people they meet when they're 18, 19, 20, 21. I myself met my husband when I was 20. Those years are very important years for you to grow into yourself as an individual and not create further baggage and pain. The party scene can often leave women feeling empty and struggling with their relationships and self-image. It is filled with a lot of fun in the moment, but it comes at a major cost. 
be aware in this area of your life. Do not feel like you need to fit in by like excessively using alcohol or drugs or hookup culture or whatever. Stay true to who you are and remember that your ultimate goal isn't to be the hottest girl at the party. Your ultimate goal is to be a wonderful wife and mother and that's wonderful. All right, my next piece of advice is to be mindful about your sex life. To my Christians, this of course means abstaining from sex until you're married as the Bible explicitly warns against sexual immorality. But for all of my non-Christians, you know that I dearly love you guys as well. This is going to be left up to your discretion as you don't need to abide by my scripture for your life. Of course, it is still wonderful and life-giving to be mindful in this area as I truly believe sex is for three purposes, reproduction, pleasure, and pair bonding. Never believe that you can pursue sex and only receive pleasure because you also are dabbling in the area of reproduction and pair bonding. Even if you avoid reproduction through birth control, you still will end up pair bonding with whoever you have sex with. Be aware of our biology as women. We are not the same as men and we bond much differently during sex. If a man does not want to be with you because you are a virgin or because you plan on staying a virgin until you're married, he does not respect your values and your beliefs. If you believe very strongly that that's right for you, he should respect that. And that's what you want in a marriage. You want a partnership where your husband respects your beliefs and what you know is right for yourself. Never marry or date someone who believes that they can push and control you into doing what they want or what they think is best for you. Use your discretion in this area. And remember, it is ultimately up to you. I would highly encourage you to be very careful and to learn as much as you can about the consequences of sex outside of a covenant partnership. My next piece of advice is a little bit more fun. Learn to cook and clean. This sounds very backwards and old-fashioned, but I'm not going to back down. I think it's very important. As a homemaker, some of my prime jobs during the day are cleaning and cooking. I have used this time before I'm a mother to hone in on those skills and get good at them so that it'll just be a breeze when I have little toddlers running around. Learn how to cook and clean if your goal is to be a homemaker because that's what you're going to be doing. Learn to find the joy in cooking and cleaning and really hone in on these skills. Learning how to cook your own food, learning how to clean your own house is the best way to save money when you're at home. Remember that these skills will propel you towards your dream of being a homemaker and, and enjoy the process. Cleaning and cooking and being at home is a very ancient practice that women for hundreds of years have participated in. Do not be fooled to believe that all women hate cooking and cleaning and being at home. That's a lie and it's propaganda. Sure, some women truly do hate being homemakers, but it's not everybody. My next piece of advice is to surround yourself with content that reflects your dreams. We don't need to live in bubbles, but remember that what you consume reflects how you behave, what you think about, what you talk about, and where you ultimately will lead your life. Surround yourself with content online and in person that will benefit your goal of being a homemaker. For me, this means following accounts online that reflect cleaning, cooking, scripture, family, beauty, things that I want to improve in my life. Remember that what you consume reflects your perspective on the world. And if you're consuming a lot of hookup culture, Instagram model, party scene kind of content, you're going to think about that stuff. You're going to live your life in a way that reflects those ideals and values. What you follow online reflects what you value. Remember too, this doesn't mean living in a bubble. So for your main sustenance, focus on things that reflect the values you care about and the life you ultimately want to live. And once in a while, treat yourself to some celebrity gossip or whatever you want, but just be mindful in this area. All right, my 10th and final tip for traditional young women. As I've said before, you're going to garner some backlash, but do not be the backlash to other people. Do not feel like you need to impose your beliefs, values, thoughts on everyone around you. If someone asks you about your thoughts or your lifestyle or your desires or anything, be open and share. 
but do not feel like you are here to change everyone's mind or convince people that your way is the only way. Like I've said so many times before, I don't believe every woman is cut out for motherhood or a career or every woman is cut out for being at home. Do not become so dogmatic and legalistic about your beliefs that you try to change other people. Gather with people and enjoy people who believe what you do, but do not be aggressive against people who are different than you. Being a traditional young woman does not mean forcing other people to be traditional. It just means living that out yourself and enjoying that life yourself and pursuing that life yourself. And then ultimately with your husband and your community. Build up relationships built on mutual understanding and trust and do not cut out all friends that don't display those values unless they have a negative impact on you or are extremely rude and mean to you. Reflect on the fact that we are all different, especially in this modern world, and not everyone's going to be traditional and that's okay. In total, just remember that this is subject to change. As you're a young woman, you're not going to be the same person you are now that you will be in five to 10 years. Go easy on yourself and do not be too aggressive about finding a husband as soon as possible. Let that happen naturally and never settle for someone who's incompatible to you. But also in the same vein, remember you do need a husband if you want to be a homemaker or a housewife. Don't stay home every single night hiding out from the men in the world, but remember to have standards. Don't turn down opportunities if you're single, but always remember to keep your ear to the ground for how to further build into that traditional life. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. As usual, if you're interested in more of this content, you can check out my written blog. And if you want to see what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I've left my handle up during this entire video. I hope that you have a wonderfully blessed and feminine day.